Hello everyone, I'm Nithya Sagairaj from St. Joseph of Cluny High Secondary School, Puducherry. I'm here to present a project titled Effectiveness of Hands-on Learning Methodology over Demonstration Method in Teaching of Science. All of us know learning of science cannot be restricted within the two covers of a book or the four walls of a classroom. And I do understand that most of our schools have science laboratories filled with teaching aids, equipment, experimental uh, um, uh, equipment, etc. Okay, but do we really allow our children to use them properly, to explore them? Then how do they learn the concepts thoroughly? Okay, so according to me, we should allow children to use these teaching learning materials, play around with them, explore them. Only then they'll have that hands-on learning uh, experience, okay, which, through which they will enjoy. They'll have a sense of joy uh, in learning science and also they will develop a scientific temper. Okay, this slide is just an example to show us that the more senses we use, the um, better we receive that we perceive information and we learn and remember concepts. So give children the hands-on learning experience to ensure thorough learning in teaching of science. So these were the aims and objectives to design teaching learning materials using no cost or low cost materials to teach the same topic using three different methodologies. One is chalk and talk, demonstration of the teaching learning material and hands-on learning activities. And also to the third objective was to assess the difference in learning by these three method, methods and also to find the method in which students learn the best. So the methodology, 90 students, slow learners were chosen from three different classes, class 6, 9 and 11, who secured the least marks among their classmates in the midterm exam which was conducted earlier. So they were divided into three groups of 30 students each, named group one, group two, and group three. Group one was taught using chalk and talk method, group two using demonstration method, group three using hands-on learning method. And after they were taught, immediately the learning was assessed using the same worksheets. So what are the teaching learning materials that I designed? Uh, for class six, the topic that was chosen was light and shadows. These were the materials, as you can see, they're all low cost or no cost materials. The activities that they were given, they were just allowed to use these materials like butter paper or a cardboard, a piece of cardboard or a transparent sheet. They were allowed to hold them against light and to see whether those objects allowed light to completely pass through them or not. And they were also uh, given certain activities like games, simple games like fire on the mountain and they keep running around three circles and as soon as the teacher calls out a particular question, accordingly they get to the corresponding circle. And for class 9, I used uh, uh, the topic chosen was electronic distribution and valency. These were the materials that I used. I made a little uh, electron distribution playboard, which looks like this. So these were given to them in the demonstration method. I actually used this board and demonstrated how it works. In the, uh, for the group 3, this was given to a small group of three children each and they were allowed, they were also given uh, a few uh, pulses like chana or peanuts to be used as electrons. So this is how it works. When I call out the atomic number 8, for example, they just start fill, dropping those electrons into these spaces. Two goes here, the next six gets into the next shell, the L shell. So there will be two remaining spaces, which means that this particular atom needs two more electrons to complete uh, the valence shell and thus attain stability. Okay, which means the valency is two and because they're gaining two negative uh, electrons, the valency is going to be minus two. Okay, so this way it was easier for them to actually play around with this board a little bit in order to learn the concept of electronic distribution and valency. And they were also allowed to play a similar game where they run around concentric circles and if the number of the electron or the electron number is called out, say for example, the electron number 10, they're supposed to get into that particular circle. For class 11, I used, uh, the topic was fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane. These are the materials that I used. So I just made a little uh, model, which looks like that. Okay, so here the bottle caps uh, are the lipid molecules. These are the heads and these threads represent the, the tails. Okay, and there are also certain proteins called intrinsic proteins, which pierces through these layers, and extrinsic proteins, which, just, which are just present on the external surface. 
attached and uh, this is just a model. I use the plastic cover just to make sure that these lipid molecules stay in place. Otherwise, there's no plastic cover like this in a plasma membrane. So in the, uh, for group three, I actually allowed them to make the model. I, you know, in small groups of three, they just took some 10 to 15 minutes to make a very rough model of a, a plasma membrane. So this is the data that I collected, group one, group two, and group three for all the three classes. As you can see, the average marks increases from group one to group three. Next. Okay, so the average marks for group one is the least for, uh, you know, uh, who were taught using chalk and talk method. For demonstration method, that's group two. Okay, it keeps on increasing. The average performance of group one students from classes six, nine, and 11 were the least with 24.35, 22, and 48.5. 0.5 percentage. Group 2 students performed a little better than them, whereas group 3 students secured the highest with 39.1, 35 and 66 respectively. Next. Class 6 students performance was better when you compare demonstration uh, method and uh, learn, uh, uh, hands on learning activities. The performance was better by 9.6 percentage. In case of class 9 students, it, the performance was better by 6% and that of uh, class 11 students performance was better by 9.5%. So with this, we come to the conclusion, the students from all the three classes perform their best with hands-on learning methodology than demonstration method. So learning by doing is the most effective method than demonstration method. And students, in fact, all the teachers need not make these teaching learning materials all the time. We can actually give it to the students and ask them to make it, which actually gives them more experience with that. And uh, we should also uh, allow students to use only low cost or no cost materials or simply recycle non-biodegradable materials so, so that we can even conserve resources. And designing teaching learning materials uh, by the teachers or by the students is more effective as we know what is the level of the students and what are the resources that are available. So we can uh, use the same resources. So this will uh, allow them to enjoy learning science with joy and a sense of wonder and also inculcate scientific temper. These are the, some, some challenges that we face in hands-on learning methodology. Like it requires a lot of planning, time management, spacious classrooms are required. Of course, there's limited scope for board exam classes and also you require a lot of good class control. So a great teacher is not the one who teaches a different topic, but the one who teaches the same topic differently. Next. So let's be great teachers and change the world by first changing our attitude and becoming great teachers. Next. Thank you.